Hey folks, and welcome once again to the Morse July 2023 Adventures Day 8, July the 8th. Uh, a kickback, laid back day, slept in till 80s, 90s, <laughs> all right. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, uh, not a whole lot, oh, excuse me, already on it. Not a whole lot was planned for today. Uh, we did have to go into town to get some shopping done uh, uh, for this upcoming week, and so we did that. Uh, the closest, uh, actually the closest grocery store of any sort was about uh, 25 miles away. We went to Millersboro. Yeah, Millersboro. B-U-R-G, not Burl, B-O-R-O. Millersburg, excuse me, Millersburg, um, <laughs> and uh, it's it's funny thing about GPS and uh, Google Maps and Garmin and all them other kinds of whatever. Um, it had its, I looked at the map and I thought, well, we would just take out to the right and go down that road and take a left and go straight in there. So we get in the jeep and Chrissy pulls it up and off we go and it says turn left so I turn left 1,000 feet turn right so we turn right and we go down this little country road and I'm talking about country road little country little county country road uh, and it's wide enough for two vehicles and then we go down some more and it goes into another little country road and it's wide enough for one and a half vehicles and then pretty soon the pavement starts and it turns into gravel. And then uh, after a little bit, the gravel ends and it turns into dirt. And we're going off. I mean, we are literally, <laughs> it's funny, folks. We are literally going through farmland and the barn and everything's on one side of the road and the house and everything's on the other side. I mean, we were actually going right through their farms. Beautiful. Loved it. All right. <coughs> And as, as I've told you before, we really like to get off the road, uh, the main roads. You know, the, the U.S. highways uh, provide some scenery when we're traveling from point A to point B. Definitely more than what the interstates do. Um, so we like to get on the U.S. highways and even the state highways. But we were in the county roads, okay? Not even county highways, county roads. Small county roads. And it was great. It really was. I mean, we were right by the pasture land. Oh, excuse me. Right by the corn and the wheat fields. It, it was It was just... And, and when you see my pictures, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. I've already posted them. Um, and for some reason, I've, I've told you before, I don't know why, but videos I can't post with my pictures. Maybe they're too large or something. I don't I don't know, but it won't let me post them with my pictures. But anyway, we get to uh, Millersburg and we do our shopping. Uh, and it we've got pictures of, of the Amish buggies on the road and Amish buggies parked at different businesses in Murfreesboro or Millersburg. And it was it's just great. They it had a big, big old sign. Okay, big old sign, yeah. It had a big sign. Hitching post, that way. And you, you know, and then you look over there and there's, there's a covered area for the, the Amish to pull their buggies in so that their animals, their horses will be out of the elements and the buggies will be protected from the elements. Obviously during rain and, you know, winter time and whatnot. It was, it was neat. Um, and it was neat to see the uh, the lights on them, you know, turn signals and all that, because they do have those, and and uh, you know they've got a battery that's that's in the in the buggy, so they have lights and and all. it was it was just unique, really, really liked it. But when we came back, I told Chrissy, I said, Mama, I says I looked at the map, I said we're not going because it was tw twenty. Uh, actually, it was more like a half hour or maybe forty minutes to get there. Coming back was like 20 minutes. And I told her, I said, we're going to go straight out this way. When that road turns right, we're going to go straight, which is what we did. Went right into Nashville, Ohio. Took a left on 514 State Road. Four miles, we're back at the campground. 
none of this, you know, dirt road, gravel road. <laughs> but like I said, it was fun. I mean, and especially if you got a Jeep, it makes it even more fun. But uh, we had a good day, really did. More people in our group have come in today, so we've seen people that we, you know, friends that we haven't seen in a year. Um, you know, walked around the campground, and, and I I had my phone with me, but I didn't think about taking pictures as we did, because they've got a hiking trail around. It's about a mile long. Um, I should have taken some pictures because it went out through the cornfields and whatnot, but I forgot about it. Maybe I'll do it sometime next week. But anyway, a nice, peaceful day. It really was. A enjoyable day. Uh, you know, most of, we're still going to have some that will come in tomorrow, but most everybody is here. Uh, probably another five or six are coming in tomorrow. And then uh, the festivities, festivities start tomorrow night with the Sunday night ice cream social. All right? The Sunday, Sunday social. All right? Uh, and speaking of social, folks, let's, let's get into the word. All right. Uh, today's word, it, it, it comes from from Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 8. But before I read that, I want to, to back up a little bit, okay? And, you know, yesterday I talked about, you know, helping and, 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 and you know, doing good to your neighbor and, and without hope for reward and that your reward would be in, you know, would be greater, would be received. That you're, you know, the, the sons and daughters of, of God, you know. And so, you know, I, I want to touch a little bit on that, but I want to start in verse 5 instead of verse 8, which is today's scripture. Let not, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. And this is Christ talking. Okay, well, of course, now, you know, Peter is, or uh, uh, the author of Hebrews is, is really unknown. Many people believe it may have been Peter. But, you know, he's talking about what, what Christ said. All right. For he himself has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me? Remember, those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith fellow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Now here is today's verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not been profit to those who have not occupied have not been occupied with them. All right, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Many times in the Old Testament. There is writings in Scripture, uh, such as when Nebuchadnezzar threw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego into the fire and said, Behold, did we not throw three, but yet I see four, and he looks like the Son of God? He's talking about Christ. Okay, so there's magnifications in the Old Testament where Christ appeared. Okay? But he appeared at that time with a different mission than he did when he came as a babe in the manger. All right. His mission then was to be the sacrificial lamb. To end all sacrifices. All right. So he is the same yesterday. The Old Testament. Today. The New Testament. And tomorrow. The New Testament. Because we are the New Testament church. Okay. Okay. When Christ came to earth and died on the cross and resurrected on the third day, he established a new covenant. Not the covenant of Abraham, and not the covenant with Moses, but a new covenant with us through him to God the Father. All right. So we are the new 
church. We are the New Testament church, if you will. So he was the same in the Old Testament. He was the same in the New Testament. If you're talking about the first four books, the Gospels, where everything is all red letters, all right? When he was here on earth for 33 years, and he's the same today because we are living in his covenant. Okay? And his covenant was that you no longer had to go to the priest and sacrifice a dove, a lamb, an ox. You know, you do not have to make atonement on the uh, and sacrificial days, uh, 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 sacrifices on the days of atonement. All right? Because he became the sacrificial lamb. You no longer had to go to the priest and hope that your sacrifice, hope that your offering would be significant for God. Because he became that sacrificial lamb. He who knew no sin died for the sin of all mankind. Okay? So he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? And they say, well, you know, that, that's, I don't, I don't really understand that. I don't really, how can he die for me? Well, let me tell you this simple, okay? I don't have a whole lot of answers, okay? My answers are in the Bible, and the Holy Spirit reveals them to me as he sees fit. But I can tell you this, that Christ died for you and he died for me over 2,000 years ago. And the blood that he shed on that cross is the blood that covers us. So this is where the covenant comes in. So we can now boldly. See, let me back up. In the Old Testament, the high priest once a year we went into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement. Okay, he was the only one that could go into the presence of God. But when Christ died, that curtain that separated the Holy from Holies, the Holy of Holies, from the rest of the inner, cha inner chamber, from the rest of the tabernacle, the temple, was rent in two, and he exposed it. So through the blood of Christ, that sacrificial lamb that he became, we can now boldly go to God the Father and say, Hey, Dad, thanks. Hey, Dad, I got a problem. Hey, Dad, what about this? You see, as a parent, it made my heart drilled, just flitters, when my kids would say, Hey, Dad, I got a question. What about this? Or, Dad, I need some help on this. I need some advice on this. What do you think about this? It made me feel good. It made me feel valued. It made me feel validated. All right? Just think of what God thinks. Okay? When he made us a free moral agent that we could reject him or not, come and say, hey, Dad, thanks. Hey, Dad, what about this? Hey, Dad, can you guide me on this? See, and that's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Christ said, I have to leave so that a comforter can come to you and a guide can come to you. That he, a comforter will be your guide. Okay, that's the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have that relationship, or you can go in there and say boldly, without fear, and say, hey, Dad. In other words, God in heaven, what about this? God in heaven, thank you. God in heaven, I need advice. God in heaven, help me. And he's saying, you bet, daughter. You bet, son. You bet, child. I'm here. Open arms. Come on to me. What do you got? Okay. You see, folks, that's what it's talking about. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because Jesus Christ was God manifested in the man. All right. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you can boldly go in front of the Father and say, Hey, Dad, you know, then please just repeat this prayer after me. 
Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. I understand that Jesus died on the cross for me and shed his blood to cleanse my sins, to atone for all the wrong that I have done. Forgive me, Father, through Jesus Christ. Help me, Father, to be worthy of the gift of your Son. Help me, Father, to establish a more personal relationship with you, with Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Help me, Father, to be what you have called me to be, a child of yours. Forgive me, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And folks, if you've said that prayer, then please, please, call a friend that you know is a Christian and tell them that you just said that prayer and ask them to help you with your walk. Get a Bible if you don't have one already and read it. Read it daily. Pray daily. And ask the Holy Spirit, as you read the Bible, to reveal to you what God would have you know that day because it's an ongoing process you read one scripture today next week it may be a totally different meaning because you've grown some more in Christ all right go to church you need to go to church folks some folks say that that oh you know I, I've said the prayer and I've asked for forgiveness and and that's good to go I don't need to go to church yes you do because we are a spirit you see when you weren't living for Christ, when you weren't saved, the devil didn't care. But now that you have given your heart to Christ, he's going to do everything he can to make you stumble and fall and create doubt in your mind that this is all nothing. But this is true. Because Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Go to church, read your Bible, pray every day. Folks, God bless you. Uh, we plan on going to church in the morning, so I'll give you a report tomorrow night on how service was uh, here in Ohio. Okay? And uh, until then, God bless and good night.